Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a brief look at expected loss of a credit asset when there is a correlation between the probability of default and the loss given default. For my FRM candidate customers, I really like this exercise because we get to apply ideas that we studied in statistics. And so let me show you what I mean with some input assumptions. As usual, those are in yellow. First, I have an adjusted exposure of 10 million. And recall, the adjusted exposure is going to be all of the bank's outstandings plus some portion of its commitments, specifically the usage given default multiplied by the commitments. Next, I have an assumption of 1% for the probability of default or what we're calling here the expected default frequency. I'm using the language from Michael Ong. So that's our probability of default, really, of 1%. And then a loss given default of 75%. And hopefully you know that 1 minus the loss given default is equal to our recovery rate. So we're assuming a 25% recovery. I picked that because it happens to be the LGD that we, we use under the Basel II framework for subordinated or junior claims. Now to calculate the expected loss, here's the formula that we are familiar with from the FRM, and it's just the product of the three components. It's the expected, I'm sorry, adjusted exposure multiplied by the expected default frequency or probability of default multiplied by the loss given default. So that's really our key formula in the credit risk section, the product of these three. Now, one of my smart customers this year pointed out does, and said, doesn't this assume these are not correlated? And that's absolutely correct. And that's a great point. This formula here, taking the product of the expected default frequency and the loss given default, assumes they are independent or not correlated. The correlation is zero. And so I get 75,000. But it's a great exercise to see if we can figure out the expected loss if there is positive correlation between the expected default and the loss given default. And in fact, there is research to support this. And I, hopefully it's somewhat intuitive. As the probability of default increases, we probably expect the loss given default to increase as well. So now I'm going to assume a 50% correlation between the two variables. EDF and LGD. What I'd like to do now is calculate, is convert the correlation to a covariance, and we know how to do that if we have the volatilities or standard deviations of the two variables. So if I go up here to expect a default frequency, that is a binomial distribution, so it turned, so we can use the properties of the binomial variable to get the variance, and the variance is just EDF times 1 minus EDF. So if I go EDF multiplied by 1 minus EDF, I get the variance, but I want the volatility, or standard deviation is the same, and I'm going to take the square root. So that's the standard deviation of this variable, the expected default frequency. I also want the standard deviation of the loss given default and that is the hard variable to parameterize. So I'm just going to cheat and make it an input of 25%. And now I can calculate the covariance. And hopefully my FRM candidates know how to do that. The covariance is just the product of the correlation and the two standard deviations. Covariance equals correlation multiplied by standard deviation of the variable multiplied by standard deviation of the other variable. Or put another way, correlation is equal to covariance divided by the product of the volatilities. So here's the covariance that's necessarily implied by my correlation of 50%. And now I can go to calculate the expected loss that accounts for this positive correlation. And so if I could just direct you here to the formula math here, all I'm doing is applying one of the properties for covariance. And instead of random variables x and y, I'm using the random variables that we've been looking at. So here's the key property of covariance. The covariance between x and y 
is equal to the expected value of the product of x and y minus the product of their expected value or the product of their means. That's a key formula for covariance. Now, if I just substitute here in the expected default frequency and loss given default frequency, we see that the covariance is equal to the expected value of their product minus the product of their means. And so I really want this term here, so I'm just going to add this term to both sides. And what I've got here is the formula I want. I now have the expected value of the product of expected default and loss given default, that's what I want, is going to equal the product of their means plus the covariance. That turns out to be simple and elegant, really. And so here, I'm going to implement that formula. First, I'm going to take the product of their mean, the expected default frequency mul multiplied by the loss given default. So that right here corresponds to the product of their means. And notice, that simply is the expected loss in percentage terms if there is no correlation. And now to, to capture or account for the correlation, I'm simply going to add the covariance term. So see how this formula here, I now I'm talking about not the expected loss of uncorrelated variables, but rather the expected loss of the correlated expected default frequency and loss given default, which is right here. It's the expectation of the product, if those variables are correlated, is now equal to the EDF multiplied by the loss given default plus the covariance. And I get 1.99% which if I multiply by my exposure ends up being almost 200,000. And you can see here, we can compare in pink the expected loss without correlation to the expected loss, which is more than twice as high with the correlation. And just as a test, I might reduce this correlation to zero. And in fact, they're the same. And as I add correlation, my expected loss is going up higher and higher. So I hope this was helpful. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.